These are not excuses as to what I did. Like what I did was completely wrong and totally fucked up. It was like magnetic. Like we were talking, moving closer, like just like as we were talking, like as time went on, it's like we just start talking closer and closer. And then all of a sudden it's just like, we're like hissing. Sandoval is a narcissist. He doesn't have that type of emotional capacity to love anything. I know I have to take accountability for my actions. Completely, completely prepared to do that. If anything good can come out of this, is that I just learn and never get myself in the situation again. Learn, see the mistakes that I made, stay in therapy. I was blatantly shoving my affair in my longtime girlfriend's face and she didn't even notice, so I'm the victim here. Is a wild take, even for the most gaping of a-holes. Hashtag pump rules, hashtag Scandoval. I have always consistently ranked Tom Sandoval as my number one favorite Vanderpump Rules cast member. Well now, given the disgusting things that he has done to my third favorite cast member, Ariana Maddox, I rank him so much lower. People do horrible things every day. Rarely do these horrible things make national headlines and become a viral topic on TikTok for a month straight. But recently, a reality TV scandal was exposed and the internet cannot stop talking about it. This is the craziest news that's not, that doesn't impact me that I'm taking very personally. Um, Vanderpump Rules, this is the crazy, like this stuff doesn't seem real. But it is. So what is going on in this latest scandal that's taking over the internet? And who is involved? Reality stars of the show Vanderpump Rules, Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis were exposed for having an affair behind Tom Sandoval's partner and Raquel's close friend, Ariana Maddox. So Tom Sandoval has been in a relationship with someone named Ariana for 10 years. The drama is that Tom Sandoval has been having a months long affair with someone named Raquel, whose name is actually Rachel. Raquel was very, very good friends with Ariana. Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval were a power couple for nine years on the Vanderpump Rules reality show. And the affair coming to light resulted in a very dramatic breakup between the two. The cheating allegations went viral in early March with many fans completely shocked that these allegations came to light while the show's season 10 is still airing. Vanderpump Rules. I'm shook. I'm so shook. The build up, the deceit, the most unfathomable twist. Mainly because season 10 is following along a completely different plot line. All the signs are there and you just like, you don't, you don't even notice them at the time. If you aren't familiar with Vanderpump Rules or this situation, dubbed Scandoval and named after the cheater in the story, Tom Sandoval, you're probably wondering. Cheating, lies, and betrayal are like the hallmark of reality television. Why is everyone so upset at this situation specifically? To many people, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox were a real couple that they knew of, who they watched on reality TV for nine, ten years. Fans saw them fall in love through Vanderpump Rules. They saw their relationship grow, continue to support one another, even buy a house together. And then Scandoval comes to light. Every negative thing each Vanderpump Rules cast member had said about Tom Sandoval was finally proven to be true. That he's selfish, narcissistic, and not a good partner in the first place. Sandoval is a narcissist. He doesn't have that type of emotional capacity to love anything. He's such a fucking ugly piece of shit man. I hate him. I'm not saying that this man is a narcissist. He's a minimum a very toxic person. The Bravo universe has united. We all hate Tom Sandoval right now. That's a given. Is this all maybe an odd parasocial dynamic where fans are too emotionally invested in the lives of reality stars? I mean, 
Yeah, absolutely. But I would argue that the entire purpose of reality shows is aimed to create an odd parasocial dynamic. Reality TV is branded to be a look into people's real lives, their dramas, their romance. The way that reality TV is filmed and edited is supposed to give the appearance to viewers that you're getting a peek into someone's life. And that entire situation in itself automatically creates something very parasocial. And honestly, people who sign up for reality TV know that, especially someone like Tom Sandoval, who has been on reality TV for 10 years, and yet he still participated in one of the biggest reality TV show betrayals of all time. So, what is Scandival? Why did it rock the internet? And who is involved? Scandival, pasta drama, it ain't about the pasta, and five seasons of Vanderpump Rules that I burned through within a few days. My biggest health goal recently has been just to feel more relaxed and to get better sleep because lately when I go into full editing mode, it's so easy to avoid all of my health routines. I definitely needed an immunity boost and I couldn't ask for a better brand to do that with other than today sponsor Care Of. Now, the last time I worked with Care Of, they recommended that I take a prenatal, which I thought was a great idea. And a month later, I ended up getting pregnant. So that was a great recommendation from them. And I will always remember them and appreciate them because I used their prenatal vitamins throughout my pregnancy. You can try Care Of yourself and join me by using code CWHM50 at TakeCareOf.com for 50% off your first order or by clicking the link in the description. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. Care Of's in-depth quiz will give you personalized doctor-backed recommendations, taking all the guesswork out of what supplements are best for you. Each time I do Care Of's quiz, I really like the recommendations that they give me. I feel like they're very practical and logical recommendations based off of what I said in Care Of's quiz were my biggest needs. After taking my personalized quiz, Care Of recommended for me the Gut Check Powder, Rhodiola for Stress and Mood, a Probiotic Blend, Iron, fish oil, and their sleep blend for sleep support, which includes melatonin, ashwagandha, valerian, and passionflower extract. I love that blend because it's more than just melatonin. For me personally, it's the most effective supplement for sleeping that I've found. So once again, for 50% off your first Care Of order, you can use my code CWHM50 at takecareof.com or click the link in the description below. Go sign up now, take the quiz, to see what supplements Care Of recommends for you. And now let's get back into the Vanderpump Rules drama. I do want to put a quick disclaimer. Though things can be exaggerated for reality television, the people being discussed in this video are real people with real emotions, feelings, and everything that has happened has impacted their lives in a very real way. And I think it's important not to forget that. Please don't send any of these people hateful messages or comments. Vanderpump Rules is a Bravo reality TV show that's part of the Bravo-verse that started in 2013 as a sort of spin-off on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The show was created by Lisa Vanderpump, who's a longtime Beverly Hills housewife. And the idea of the show is to focus in on the employees at Lisa Vanderpump's Sir restaurant. Sir standing for C unique restaurant. Lisa Vanderpump was a real housewife of Beverly Hills. Her premise was that she owns bars and restaurants in LA and all the people on her show work or worked for her at some point. Much of the employees at Sir were young, wannabe rich and famous people living in Hollywood. And the show initially gained a lot of popularity because it was interesting to see young, mostly attractive, aspiring actors and singers who are all working in a restaurant together and the drama that stems from that. It's about line. the damn pasta. Get over the damn pasta. Read between the f***ing lines. It ain't about the pasta. The fact that they were constantly intermingling with one another, dating each other, then cheating on each other, breaking up, getting back together, cheating again, fighting with friends. I don't deny the fact that I cheated on you. I f***ing totally 
Tom, um, we know that you cheated on Kristen with a bottle service girl in Vegas. Yes, yes. All this was before you knew that she cheated on you with Jax Taylor. So quickly, this show became more about the relationships of these employees and how it developed through time as opposed to just them, you know, working in a restaurant. And there have been a lot of employees and cast members who have appeared on Vanderpump Rules throughout its 10 years of filming. So much so that I'm not going to go into every single cast member and their backstory because this would be like a four hour video. And even then I feel like it would probably make this story more confusing. So instead I'm just gonna focus on the cast members of season nine and 10 and those directly involved in Scandival. I mean, it's hard enough as it is for things not to get confusing considering there are two different people named Tom on this show. We need something strong. Oh, she's holding and both of them have kissed Raquel. His lips are like soft. Raquel. And they are both part owners in the exact same LA restaurants. This season's main cast consists of Lisa Vanderpump, owner of Sir and creator of the show, Tom Sandoval, also known as Just Sandoval, an original Vanderpump Rules cast member, partial owner of two LA restaurants. Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandys, but he's mainly known for being a part of one of the most popular couples on the show alongside Ariana Maddox. Ariana Maddox appeared on the show in its early days, joining as Sandoval's friend and fellow bartender. When I first heard that Ariana was coming over to Sir, I was excited because she's a good friend of mine and she's cool and she's chill. Her disposition as a voice of reason made her a popular character for fans. James Kennedy, the DJ at Sir, officially joined the Vanderpump Rules cast in season four. Legal name Rachel Levis, but known on the show as Raquel, is a former beauty pageant queen who joined Vanderpump Rules in a reoccurring role in season six. She was mainly just known as the longtime girlfriend of James Kennedy, who proposed to Raquel in season nine before, less than a year later, the couple broke up for good. Raquel and I have, uh, what do you want to say? Um, we've decided to break off the engagement. Much of the cast of Vanderpump Rules always had a certain disdain for Raquel, calling her basically every name in the book for stupid. I'm not sure I dummy before my dad died. I, I'm 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 dead. Dead. I hate that I called you dumb, but what else do you want me to call you? I think you've forgotten your place, but I'm gonna remind you. I'm not gonna say the D word or the S word, but I'm gonna say you're not thinking things through. What are the D and the S word? Dumb and stupid. Tom Schwartz, also known as Just Schwartz, was in a reoccurring role on Vanderpump Rules since season one and is best known for being Tom Sandoval's best friend and Katie Maloney's boyfriend, husband, then ex-husband. He, alongside Tom Sandoval, is also a partial owner in the two LA restaurants Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandy's. Katie Maloney is an original Vanderpump Rules cast member and is the ex-wife of Tom Schwartz. Sheena Shea is also an original cast member and a longtime friend of Ariana Maddox. In season 10, Sheena got married in Mexico, which became the center point for much of the plotline and drama for the season. Lala Kent joined the show in season four. Lala seems to be known as the brutally honest character of the group who tells it like it is, normally in a mean-spirited way. Be quiet, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. No, I don't empower you because I think you're pathetic. How dare you? She is also known for being the ex-fiance of Randall Emmett, the disgraced Hollywood producer. Other important people to note who I'll be mentioning throughout this story is Kristen Doughty, an original Vanderpump Rules cast member who was fired after season eight. I don't think I know you belong here anymore. She was also Tom Sandoval's longtime girlfriend before he started dating Ariana Maddox. Despite that, Kristen Doughty and Ariana Maddox became close friends, and Kristen has continued to stay by Ariana's side. Most people know Andy Cohen, but if you didn't know his exact role in the Bravo verse, Andy Cohen is a Bravo executive producer and host of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. He's the interviewer for all of the Vanderpump Rules reunion 
reunions, as well as most Bravo shows reunions, where they talk about the different controversies that happened for each particular season. Here with Lisa Vanderpump and the staff of Sir and some former Sir staffers and some business partners. Oh, Lord. Lots <laughs> of relationships here. It seems like with this group, things are always changing. Though the show Vanderpump Rules started out with a lot of drama, prior to filming season 10, the show had gone downhill and was seen as pretty much dead. First off, hardly any of the cast members worked at the restaurant Sir anymore, and all of them were paired off into long-term relationships. This meant that the drama of the early seasons of the cast members working at the same restaurant and all cheating on each other and having relationship problems was no longer happening. They weren't working together anymore, and they weren't intermingling anymore because they had established relationships. On top of that, when the show started, the cast was in their early to mid 20s. Now most of the cast is in their mid 30s, meaning that the same partying lifestyle drama and fights just hit differently. It seems like you're all going to start having babies to me. Yeah, baby time. I'm a ratchet. Whore. Stop coming for me. I'm over it. You're okay. No, I'm not okay. But then, just as fans were starting to swear off the show, scandal after scandal began to hit the cast members of Vanderpump Rules. The first thing that happened was a divorce between a longtime couple on the show, Katie Maloney and Tom Schwartz, aka other Tom. On top of that, Hollywood producer Randall Emmett, who was the ex-fiance of cast member Lala Ken, was facing allegations of civil fraud, sexual misconduct, and other abuse. Just like that, Vanderpump Rules was back in the headlines. Season 10 was filmed in the summer of 2022 and premiered in February of 2023, with a new episode currently airing each week on Wednesday night. So let's talk about the dating histories and backgrounds of these cast members leading up to Scandival, and mainly the relationships between Tom Sandoval, Ariana Maddox, Raquel Levis, and James Kennedy. When Tom Sandoval first appeared on Vanderpump Rules, he was dating cast member Kristen Doughty, as mentioned earlier. So you hooked up with a guy with a girlfriend of six years. Yes. Congratulations. We've been My friends My boyfriend for of almost years. six years, you've been hanging out for five f***ing minutes. Congratulations. Interestingly, on the show, Kristen Doughty infamously cheated on Tom Sandoval twice with his best friend and co-star Jax Taylor. And you f***ed my boyfriend and cheated on your boyfriend. Are you kidding? What is wrong with you? Everything. I don't deny the fact that I cheated on you. I f when Kristen Doughty and Jax Taylor's affair came to light, several punches were thrown. Kristen wrote a book, and then everyone seemed to move on. In her book, He's Making You Crazy, Kristen Doughty wrote about why she and Tom Sandoval broke up in 2012, saying that Tom had allegedly cheated on her with Ariana, according to US Weekly. Kristen, you're sitting across from the girl who kissed or hooked up with Tom. Multiple uh, times. And lied a few times to your Wrong. face. How hurt are you still? F***ing heartbroken, obviously. She wrote, A girl can't actually steal someone's boyfriend. He made a free-willed choice to leave me, and a free-willed choice to be with her. I have a connection with Ariana unlike anything I have ever had before, and I am so, so thankful for that. That's cute. Kristen, stop. You're only here because you're f***ing my ex-boyfriend. But then Ariana and Tom confirmed they were dating two months after he and Kristen broke up. Soon after that, they were Instagram official and have been the show's most stable couple ever since. They weathered so many storms and they're stronger because of it. I really hope to see them get married one day. Like, how does it feel to kind of be like the most stable relationship in Vanderpump Rules history? Like what's also, what's the secret behind your success? I mean, look. We definitely have our ups and downs. In 2019, the couple bought a $2 million house together. We got a house. We closed on a house. We got it. We moved in. Woo! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> 
and they're part of multiple business ventures. And the two were seen as a fan favorite, an unbreakable couple. Ariana in particular, a fan favorite because of her chill, easygoing personality. When I first heard that Ariana was coming over to Sir, I was excited because she's a good friend of mine and she's cool and she's chill. The way that you handle that is like one of the coolest and hottest things I've ever seen a girl do. Honestly. In fact, it seems like throughout Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox's relationship, Ariana was sort of branded to be the chill, easygoing, cool, laid-back partner, mainly by Tom himself. For example, in 2019, on an episode of Vanderpump Rules, Sandoval tells all of his guy friends that Ariana hooked up with co-star Lala Kent while the three of them were in his car together. Lala does, sorry Sando, I'm just in love with your girl right now. Yeah. Ariana, will you come in the back seat? And Ariana was not thrilled that her boyfriend was discussing her sexuality without her permission. It's not a big of a deal. It's not a big deal? Ariana, Ariana, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, but it's my business. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of what happened between Lala and I. But I do feel like Tom betrayed my trust by telling the story to his guy friends. But apart from a few hiccups here and there, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox seem to have a fairly healthy, stable relationship, unlike their co-star Raquel Levis. Raquel Levis didn't appear on Vanderpump Rules until season 5, but the many ups and downs in her love life have become one of the focuses of the show. When Raquel joined the show, she was in a relationship with Sir's, um, talented DJ, <laughs> James Kennedy, who she met at a New Year's Eve party. The couple's very toxic and rocky relationship was documented throughout a few seasons on Vanderpump Rules. I'm, I'm trying to tell everyone how good of a person you are. Everyone! Everyone is a K! For most of their relationship, they didn't seem to be very stable. But nevertheless, the DJ and former pageant queen got engaged in May of 2021, after more than five years of dating. The love of my life said yes, James Kennedy wrote on Instagram at the time, and Raquel Levis made an Instagram post saying, James proposed at the iconic Empire Polo Fields of Richella Friday night, and I said yes, I'm over the Coachella moon. Hashtag Richella. Now, in preparation for this video, not only did I do my normal amount of research, but I also watched the first two seasons and last two seasons of Vanderpump Rules. And something I think is really interesting about season nine, when watching it myself, is in season nine, episode four, when James proposes to Raquel, Tom Sandoval is extremely extremely involved in the engagement. More involved in the engagement than is normal for a friend to be. Tom helps set and plan everything with the engagement and even admits that he paid $25,000 of his own money to help with this Coachella-themed engagement party for Raquel. Dude, thank you so much. I know I gotta settle up with you guys, right? Most people probably wouldn't spend a lot of money on a friend's engagement, especially when they are applying for a home equity loan. But proposals are once in a lifetime opportunities. You can always borrow more money. And this is after, in that same season, they're talking about how Tom took out a home equity loan on his and Ariana's home to open a bar and is pouring so much of his money into opening said bar. How much, uh, how much did that cost? I, I'm not thinking 25 grand. $25,000? I mean, it's just like, we're trying to open a bar, we haven't got financing for the bar. Who do you have investing? It's gonna be me, Tom, we're both getting home equity loans. Imagine, after your partner is spending so much of their own money to open a business, that they also go and spend $25,000 on another woman's engagement party. I mean, major red flag. To make matters even worse, in that episode, Sandoval tells his bestie Schwartz, if you're going to propose to Raquel, you have to go all out. If you're gonna propose to 
Raquel, like, do we have to make this amazing or we're not doing it at all? I just really wonder how Ariana felt about that episode. But unfortunately, as grand of a gesture as the engagement was, less than one year later, James and Raquel ended up breaking up and calling off their engagement. In a joint statement posted to Instagram, they said, After these five wonderful years we had together, we decided we have two different goals and made the decision to call off the engagement. We love each other very much, but we aren't in love anymore. We want nothing but the best for each other, so please keep any thoughts positive. Sending love. When James and Raquel announced their breakup at the season 9 reunion, you can see Sandoval crying and looking devastated. But after Raquel's split from James Kennedy, Raquel ended up being the main source of drama for women on the show, mainly due to her post-breakup dating life, where she was dating around and seeming to target men who were already involved with other women on the show. I'm starting to see a pattern in Raquel. It seems that she's only interested in men that her friends are either married to or interested in, and that's a big red flag for me. The most notable person that Raquel kissed in season 10 is Tom Schwartz, ex-husband of cast member Katie Maloney and best friend to Tom Sandoval. Raquel made out with Schwartz at Sheena Shea's wedding in Mexico after a few women on the show had already asked her not to. If we want bodies laying everywhere, it's gonna be you hooking up with Schwartz. This event made the other woman on the show angry enough at Raquel, but little did they know the entire time this was happening, Sandoval and Raquel were also having an affair. And so, as you can guess, the fallout of this news breaking was absolutely astronomical. It looks like we're in a thruple, we're on like a romantic vacay. <laughs> Affairs are a common storyline on unscripted reality shows, but the scandal involving Vanderpump Rules, Tom Sandoval, and Raquel Levis take things to a whole new level. News of the scandal broke on March 3rd, and viewers were completely in shock as they viewed Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox as one of the show's steadiest couples. To quote a meme that has been circulating since the scandal broke, with a friend's reference. Imagine if Chandler cheated on Monica with Rachel secretly for seven months and Joey knew all along. But before we can go into the events of Scandalball, let's back up a little bit to 2022 when rumors first started circulating that Raquel was messing around with other cast members. In April of 2022, rumors were circulating that Raquel made out with fellow cast member Tom Schwartz other Tom at Coachella, but Schwartz quickly denied the rumors, tweeting, Guys, hate to break it to you, but I wasn't at Coachella. Several fans now believe that Raquel was actually seen making out with Tom Sandoval, and the anonymous source had just named the wrong Tom. But according to Tom Sandoval in a recent interview, he and Raquel first shared a kiss during a Guys Night episode in season 10, which was being filmed in the summer of 2022. We literally talked till like the sun came up the first night with like my friend Brett. It was like the guy, like if you watch the show, it was the Guys Night at the Mondrian. We're back at my house and we just like talking I'm just I'm locked out of my house and we just like we we yeah. Season 10, episode 10 was probably the most dramatic Vanderpump Rules episode in at least a very long time. And this was the episode where Raquel makes out with Tom Schwartz at a wedding in Mexico while Schwartz was in the middle of a divorce. <laughs> the kiss to you and uh tom he would think it was a cover-up for the other tom okay i genuinely like, had an interest in tom short yeah and um there is a genuine curiosity there in this episode Tom Sandoval is weirdly giddy and maybe a little bit uncomfortable about Tom Schwartz and Raquel's kiss. Raquel. To the point where his partner, Ariana Maddox, is a little bit weirded out by his behavior and tells him point blank, you're being weird. Tom, stop. What? You're acting weird. What? You're acting anything. Why are you saying Raquel, Raquel, Raquel? And after Schwartz and Raquel make out, Schwartz surprised surprisingly becomes completely disinterested in Raquel, with many fans believing that was when he learned about Raquel and Sandoval's affair. He's just minimizing 
it and giving me high fives. It's interesting because to the public, Raquel kissing Schwartz and then Raquel and Tom Sandoval's affair coming to light seem to happen one after another. To the cast members of the show, these things played out over a much longer period of time. And in season 10, there were so many warnings of the darkness that was to come. Cast member Lala Kent especially became outspoken about her hatred of Raquel during season 10, saying almost prophetic things throughout the season. For example, Lala Kent said to Raquel on an episode that aired on March 15th, You drinking, I would never trust you around my man. Never. You drinking, I would never trust you around my man. Moments later, Katie Maloney said that Raquel was Mrs. I'm gonna make out with your man. <laughs> Hi, your treats. Hi, your boyfriend. Hi, your boyfriend. <laughs> in a confessional interview, Katie Maloney added, I'm starting to see a pattern in Raquel. It seems that she's only interested in men that her friends are either married to or interested in and that is a big red flag for me. But throughout the summer of 2022, while season 10 was being filmed, it seemed that unbeknownst to everyone, Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis were getting away with a secret affair. A source corroborated this information saying that Raquel and Sandoval began their affair last summer and that Raquel has slept over at Tom and Ariana's house when Ariana's been out of town. Raquel's ex-fiance, James Kennedy, further corroborated the information in an Instagram direct message sent to Du Moi, saying the affair started seven months ago, which would have been in July of 2022. James even claimed that Sandoval and Raquel's escapades even took place in Sandoval and Ariana's home while Ariana was sleeping. A series of since-removed Reddit threads also served with the user claiming to be Raquel's good friend, who, according to them, has known about the affair for months. Though again, this is like an anonymous Reddit thread that since has been deleted, so take the information with a grain of salt. The Reddit thread has quotes saying things like that Ariana had been suspicious of them for months. She almost caught them one night when he was sneaking out of the guest room where Raquel was staying. Ariana asked what he was doing in her room, and he said giving her water. It was 4 a.m. This Reddit user also backed up the suspicion that Sandoval was actually the one who kissed Raquel in Coachella of 2022, and also claimed that Sandoval had been telling Raquel he was going to leave Ariana for months, but had a lot of excuses as to why he couldn't. They further claimed that Raquel and Sandoval tell each other they love each other, and even have matching lightning bolt necklaces that signify their love. All the while, no other castmate had any idea this was going on. On September 20th, Raquel posts about the Vanderpump Rules season 10 wrap-up. In the video, Raquel is on top of Sandoval's shoulders in a dark foreshadowing. Then in October of 2022, this is after Sandoval and Raquel have been having an affair for multiple months, Tom Sandoval dresses up as Raquel for Halloween, which is first off, kind of creepy. And second off, apparently he does this. Then in January of 2023, in response to circulating rumors, Ariana denied that she and Sandoval had an open relationship. We don't have an open relationship, she tweeted. I'm not really that cool. Thought that was obvious. Hashtag pump rules. And the following month, Sandoval responded to a similar question during an interview with E saying, we're not in an open relationship while smirking. The other thing heard around the world uh, yeah you and ariana are in an open marriage in the trailer i uh, tell me about this openness what's going on between you two well um we are uh, we're doing good um we are not in an open relationship <laughs> and i know you could probably look at this and say ariana why didn't you have any clue this was going on there's so many different things that happened that should have made you aware of this affair but i feel like you can become very easily blinded when you're in a relationship and especially if a deep level of trust has been established, especially if you have your own mental health problems going on and aren't able to fully focus on what your partner is doing at all times. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for why Ariana might not have known this was going on. She had heard things and seen things about Raquel, but was like very much turning 
a blind eye or just it, trusting me, I guess. Or she was also maybe suspicious but didn't have any concrete proof, which can also be a hard thing because you can't really accuse someone of something if you have no concrete evidence. On March 1st of 2023, two days before the affair comes to light, Page Six asked Sandoval for the secret behind the most stable relationship in Vanderpump Rules history. And Sandoval replied, we definitely have our ups and downs for sure. I think we've been really good about respecting each other and having each other's backs in a reasonable way. That same evening, Ariana and Sandoval were spotted kissing at a gig for Sandoval's cover band, Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras. And this is reportedly the night that Ariana discovered the affair. Allegedly, what happened is Ariana picked up Sandoval's phone after it fell out of his pocket while performing with his band on stage. And she learned about the affair when a selfie video sexual in nature from Raquel popped up on his phone according to People. She reportedly began scrolling and saw their history of inappropriate texts. A source claimed the affair had been already going on for upwards of six months at this point, all the while Tom was sleeping next to Ariana in their bed. She was completely blindsided by this. Devastated doesn't even scratch the surface of how she feels. This is someone she thought she knew, someone she planned to spend the rest of her life with. You can't even put into words that betrayal. Ariana had been there for Raquel when she went through her split with James. She thought they were friends. This isn't something you do to a friend. During a recent episode of ex-cast member and friend of Ariana's Kristen Doty's love and what else matters podcast, Dodie said she was there the night Ariana found out about the cheating, claiming that when Sandoval's phone fell out of his pocket, a friend handed it to Ariana. The real truth is that Ariana had his phone and she told me that she just had this gut intuition to look at it. She just felt like she had to look, so she goes into his photos. He had screen recorded a FaceTime of himself and Raquel meeting to each other. Oh, he's the worst. He sucks. He's the worst. Kristen Doty also went on the Vile Files podcast to discuss her interactions with Ariana after the affair was discovered, saying, when I filmed with her, she's like crying and holding up her phone going, so he's saying our relationship is that of convenience and contentment or something, not love and romance. And she's immediately just flooding tears, looking at her phone going, so all of these memories, all of these wonderful trips we took, all of these videos I have, all these kissing photos, this was all bullshit. When I filmed with her, she started crying and she's like holding up her phone going, so my relationship, he's saying our, our relationship was that of like convenience and contentment or something, not love and romance. The same night that Ariana discovered the affair, Raquel was across the country in New York City. <laughs> in New York City alongside cast member Sheena Shea on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. I'm your host, Andy Cohen, live in the Bravo Clubhouse. Please welcome Sheena Shea and Raquel Levis. <laughs> where the main focus was all about Raquel kissing Sandoval's best friend, Tom Schwartz, on season 10. All the while, she had no idea that the cast was all slowly finding out about her affair with Tom Sandoval. So while Raquel and Sheena Shea were being interviewed, Ariana Maddox texted Shea, who was with Raquel that night. Sheena Shea confronted Raquel after the taping, and Raquel ended up telling Sheena the truth about her affair with Sandoval. Reportedly, Sheena was furious since she's been a longtime close friend of Ariana's, and Raquel and Sheena reportedly got into an argument that turned physical. Then, five days later, Raquel filed for a temporary restraining order against Sheena. Per page six, Raquel alleges Shay attacked her and gave her a black eye after their Watch What Happens Live appearance. TMZ also published photos of Raquel's black eye, which she allegedly received from Sheena Shea. I see your face kind of cleared up. Yeah. That's good, that's good. Okay. I do have a permanent scar okay. on my eyebrow. Oh wow, yeah, I see it. So. But Sheena Shea's lawyers have dismissed Raquel's claims. Sheena claims she never hit you. Is that true or is she, like, who's lying? Who's saying the truth? Like. Sheena knows what happened that night. Uh -huh. um, I'm 
not gonna go into it too much. Thoughts on Sheena allegedly hitting Raquel after Watch What Happens Live last week? Yeah, I think I think she did. I think she slapped her around the chops. But you know what? Her feelings would be running really high because Ariana was her best friend for like 12 years. You forget, it's not just the show. Right. It's Single. been, they, they were together working four or five years before the show. Right. Nevertheless, a temporary restraining order was granted until a hearing on March 29th. After that night, Sheena Shea, along with pretty much every other cast member of Vanderpump Rules, have been publicly supporting and standing by Ariana Maddox through all of this. Back in California, Ariana ended things with Sandoval. Producers quickly learned of the breakup and decided to restart filming Vanderpump Rules to capture the fall out of the affair as part of an extended run of season 10. It's true that they split and cameras are rolling, a source told Page Six. Less than a month after the scandal broke, Bravo released a mid-season trailer that shows the entire Vanderpump cast responding to what's gone down so far. At one point, Sandoval can be seen telling Ariana, I wish we both would have tried harder. You don't deserve one thing to your And the trailer suggests that the rest of season 10 will cross chronicle the fallout, and that's all we know so far of Scandival. Though more episodes of season 10 will come out, detailing the individual accounts of people involved. So what has been the fallout after Scandival has come to light? Ariana deleted her Instagram account for a period of time, I'm sure to give her some mental space from all the uproar of the scandal breaking, but it has since been reinstated. There's also been an uptick in support for Something About Her, the West Hollywood sandwich shop that she and cast member Katie Maloney started together and are hoping to open soon. Friends of Ariana's, co-stars, and seemingly anyone who's ever watched Bravo shared the hashtag, hashtag Team Ariana. And when Ariana returned to Instagram, she eventually made a statement on the situation with a photo of her in Mexico at a wedding. Hi, where to begin? I want to express my most sincere gratitude for the outpouring of love and support I've received from friends, family, and people I've never even met in the last two weeks. When I have felt like I couldn't even stand, you all have given me the strength to continue and seen me through my darkest hours. To say I've been devastated and broken is an understatement. However, I know that I am not in this alone. So many of my closest friends are also grieving this loss right now and reeling from this betrayal on so many levels. I am so effing lucky to have the best support system in the world, and I hope I can repay every single person for the love you have shown me. What doesn't kill me better run. Love, Ariana. What are, you, what are your thoughts about Raquel and Tom hanging out right after the show? I don't know what they do. Okay. Do you care at all what they did, like them hanging uh, out? At this point, I don't care about anything that I have Okay, okay, okay. The official Facetune account even weighed in on the scandal, editing out Sandoval from a cocktail book that he and Ariana created with Danny Pellegrino a few years back. Raquel's ex-fiance, James Kennedy, also responded to the scandal, writing, I hope you all feel as sick as I do. This explains everything. Cast member Lala Kent chimed in too, writing, Everyone said I was a bully. It's called you trigger me and I see you for who you are. Okay. I've known these two are disgusting from the jump. I've seen you for who you are for a long time and you just don't like that. But I think now is the time for you to shut the F up. I'm eating good the next time I see you. I suggest you get some energy for me. You're gonna need it. On March 4th of 2023, Lala Kent cut the price of her makeup collab with Raquel Levis in half. Everything must go. Lala Kent captions an Instagram story of the sale. On March 3rd, when Sandoval and his band performed in Anaheim, Sandoval was booed and attendees yelled out Ariana, to which he replied, we love her. Not 
Schwartz and Sandy's, the restaurant Sandoval co-owns with his best friend Tom Schwartz and several others, was review bombed and there were threats of vandalism. In response, Sandoval posted on Instagram on March 4th requesting that fans not direct their anger towards the staff of his restaurants or to his friend Tom Schwartz. Schwartz and Sandy's might have my name on it, but also there are three other partners and 20 employees who especially rely on the restaurant for income for them and their families. Just like Tom Tom, I'm a small part of a much bigger thing. Please direct your anger towards me and not them. They did nothing wrong. But in this post, he didn't apologize to Ariana, which made fans even more upset. Two days later, he posted again, this time apologizing to Ariana. I want to first and foremost apologize to everyone I've hurt in the process. Most of all, I want to apologize to Ariana. I made mistakes. I was selfish and I made decisions that hurt somebody I love. If you could go back and change everything that happened, would, would you go back and change it? Hindsight's always 20, 20 man. Oh. What was your reaction to Sandoval's uh, two apologies? The first one was more kind of about his business and then he would release one overnight about more about Ariana. Well, obviously it was because he had some kind of reaction to the first apology that he felt it was necessary to apologize to Ariana. But I don't think these apologies really are worth the kind of paper or, or the social media that they're written on. I really don't. Schwartz and Sandys also posted a message to Instagram at the time asking fans to step back. In light of the recent news, we appreciate the many words of support, but we also understand the outpouring of outrage that has been directed towards our business. However, those of us who are not famous have dedicated our time, hearts, and money to make this restaurant a reality. We too are disappointed by the current situation, as Ariana has always been a good friend and a great supporter of the restaurant. But fans have continued publicly posting, urging others to not support any of Sandoval's restaurants. I'm beyond over the Toms. I say we boycott Tom Toms and Schwartz and Sandys. Those two huge egos need a wake-up call. Hashtag pump rules. But during a later appearance of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Tom Schwartz revealed that despite the initial backlash against Sandoval for his affair, the Toms's two bars, Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandy's, have actually rebounded. I got to say, every time I go in, it's kind of thriving, he said. What's going on with your business? Well, in the beginning, it was, it was a little rough, you know, we got yeah. a, lot of, a lot of negative um, blowback from this, but I gotta say, like, every time I go in, it's kind of thriving. And according to Insider, Schwartz is right. A reporter went to the restaurant Schwartz and Sandy's and found th that the restaurant was full apart from two tables. And a source told them that the restaurant is doing better than ever from an influx of curious Vanderpump fans visiting the bar. The restaurant has been booked up since the news hit TMZ, they added. Regarding the intimate video of Raquel found on Tom Sandy's Sandoval's phone, TMZ reported that several Vanderpump Rules cast members received a letter from Raquel's lawyers. According to TMZ, Raquel's lawyers say Tom Sandoval recorded the sexual FaceTime video call without Raquel's permission. And Raquel's lawyers have sent a letter to cast members warning them against posting it to social media and forwarding it to others. In an Instagram story video, cast member Lala Kem apparently took issue with Raquel's little Mickey Mouse lawyer contacting her directly, saying he should send it to Daryl, Lala Kent's lawyer. Raquel, tell your little Mickey Mouse lawyer that if he has stuff to send over, he can send things to my lawyer. Same with the rest of my friends and cast, all right? I've never in my life had a lawyer contact me in my personal email. All right, I don't know if you know how this works. I know you're pretty brand new to the game. Didn't last long. Look what you did with your 15 minutes. You have something to send over. You can send it to my lawyer. That's why we have counsel, okay? I don't want to deal. I have a life going on. Got a little baby to take care of. I don't want to see that in the morning. I don't want to see that ever. Send it to Daryl. And of course, a meme was born out of this and Lala ended up selling merch saying send it to Daryl on it to 
make money off of this entire situation. I mean, let's be real. Raquel's attorneys allegedly warned in their letter that the video was recorded illegally without Raquel's knowledge or consent and noted a California law that prohibits non-consensual pornography, otherwise known as revenge porn. The letter reportedly warns that sharing this video would potentially violate the revenge laws and orders anyone in possession of this video to delete it immediately. Raquel also ended up posting an apology to Instagram, writing, I want to apologize for my actions and my choices, foremost to Ariana and to my friends and the fans so invested in our relationships. There is no excuse. I am not a victim and I must own my actions and I deeply regret hurting Ariana. I am reflecting on my choices, speaking to a counselor, and I'm learning things about myself, such as my patterns of codependency and addiction to being and feeling loved. I have sought emotional validation through intimate connections that are not healthy without regard for my own well-being, sometimes negatively affecting others and often prioritizing the intimate connection over my friendships. I am taking steps to understand my behavior and make healthier choices. Although I choose to be on a reality show, accepting the good and bad that comes with it, beyond my own actions, I have been physically assaulted, lost friendships, received death threats and hate emails in addition to having had my privacy violated. I've begun counseling to end my unhealthy behavioral cycle, learn to set stronger emotional boundaries, and learn to protect my mental health. I know I have to take accountability for my actions. Yeah. I'm completely, completely prepared to do that. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, have you apologized to um, Ari yet? Have you guys talked or how's um, that? I talked on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize to her over okay. text, but she didn't yeah. receive it very well. I don't expect sympathy, understanding, or forgiveness. Right now, I must focus on my own health and well-being, and as I strive to be a better person moving forward, I will prioritize my mental health and learn from my mistakes. Raquel Levis. She also posted a second Instagram statement saying, Besides the indefensible circumstances surrounding our relationship, my feelings for Tom have always been sincere and born out of a loving friendship. How did, how did it start? Like you and Tom... How, was it just something that just happened out the ordinary or is, you know? Um, it started off as a friendship. Okay. And it turned into something more. I care for Tom and I don't want to label anything or predict what lies ahead. She concluded this statement by writing that she needs time to heal. On March 23rd of 2023, during the season 10 reunion taping, Raquel and Sheena Shea filmed separately due to the restraining order. But on March 24th, Raquel Levis dropped her restraining order against Sheena Shea, a day after filming the reunion. My team tried to work with Sheena on a mutually beneficial agreement, hoping to get the TRO dropped earlier so we could film the Vanderpump Rules reunion together, Raquel said in a statement to Entertainment Tonight. The TRO was intended to provide a cooling off period period after I was punched, but I didn't want to continue with the permanent restraining order, nor did I want to cause Sheena further agony and stress. On March 29th, Raquel's temporary restraining order against Sheena Shea was officially dismissed. And the main reason it was dismissed is because Raquel didn't even show up to the court hearing. So Sheena Shea and her lawyer showed up to the courthouse for this hearing and Raquel and her lawyer never show up. Why do you think she dropped the restraining order? Well, she didn't drop it, which is why we had to come here today. With this type of restraining order, there's no way to dismiss the case. That's why we had to show up. But I think her absence today further proves that this was all a PR stunt from the beginning. Raquel set in motion all sorts of legal proceedings and consequences that she doesn't have any control over it. She can't just drop it. Once you file a police report, once you request a restraining yeah. order, there's a whole system in play, and you can't just say, hey, I changed my mind. Sheena Shea's attorney, who refers to Raquel by her legal name, Rachel, told ET, this isn't reality TV. This is the real world, and Rachel's actions have real consequences. Rachel filed a false police report, a false medical report, and a frivolous petition for a restraining order. Sheena didn't punch Rachel. 
Rachel didn't get a black eye. Sheena pushed Rachel, but only after Rachel grabbed her wrist and Rachel did not suffer a concussion. When Rachel realized that she would lose in court and that she couldn't just drop it, she decided to not show up at all. We were prepared to expose Rachel's lies, but instead she will have to live knowing that she betrayed two of her best friends, Sheena and Ariana. Instead of accepting responsibility for her actions, Rachel shamefully tried to misuse our justice system to shift blame to Sheena. We are happy that Sheena is now vindicated. In an interview with E! News, Sheena shared why she thought Raquel took out a temporary restraining order against her. I think initially she was trying to get out of filming the reunion. I think she also was listening to her crisis PR and trying to paint this victim mentality and deflect from the affair. It didn't work. However, Sheena was happy for the temporary restraining order, saying, I got to remove myself from a very toxic environment. Watching the taping through a live stream in her trailer with her husband, Brock, Sheena noted, I just got to sit back and watch it. Could you see yourself, <laughs> you know, ever being friends with her again like you were before? Hell no. That's a no. That's a hard no. How's this, uh, this whole situation been, you know, for the cast? I know, you know, you got the reunion. Um, do you, I, I'm sure that the show is, you know, going to be more popular than ever, but isn't it unfortunate that it's under these circumstances? It's extremely unfortunate, you know. Ariana doesn't deserve what has happened to her. I'm just here to be her support system. On an April 2023 episode of Watch What Happens Live, Tom Schwartz, other Tom, told Andy Cohen that he first found out that Sandoval and Raquel had a one night stand while Sandoval was having like a midlife crisis in August of 2022. Schwartz claims that that one night stand led to Raquel and Sandoval having an emotional affair. When did you first learn of Tom and Raquel's affair and were you acting as a decoy on his behalf? I learned in August, in late August about the affair, the one night stand, Okay. Allegedly. From my point of view, it became like an emotional affair, which is still inappropriate. Okay. Schwartz said that he believes Sandoval tends to have obsessions and that Sandoval is currently obsessed with Raquel. Schwartz also said that Sandoval told him in January that he was in love with Raquel and trying to break it off with Ariana Maddox. Okay. But he told me, he came to me in January and he told me that um, I told you he was in love with her in January. Your reaction was? <sighs> I was flabbergasted, okay? But I'm not surprised, because I, I, you know, listen, I'll, I think there's a lot of people out there who kind of know it was an open secret. It was an open secret. What was an open secret? Tom and Raquel, like, they were- Really? They, after that, I mean, Tom kind of got flagrant, you know? He was brazen. After and, what? After, after he told me that he was in love, I, oh. like, I don't know, it was like a release for him. And worst of all, according to TMZ, Sandoval took Raquel to St. Louis, his hometown, to meet his friends and family back in December of 2022, though they reportedly thought it was inappropriate for him to come home with a woman who wasn't Ariana. No shit. While Sandoval has stayed relatively quiet about the whole affair, recently he decided to go on a podcast with Howie Mendel to fully open up about everything. Howie Mandel. Did I say Howie Mendel? In the interview, Sandoval described in detail the first time he and Raquel kissed, which happened before Sheena Shea's Mexico wedding. We for a while have and had been sort of like just having our own lives. Like, you know, many relationships, it, it felt like it became more of like a, um, like best friends, family, sometimes roommates. Sandoval also claimed that he had broken up with Ariana on Valentine's Day before the cheating had became news and that she was just in denial. I had already broken up with her two weeks earlier and I told her, I said, listen, we don't have to post anything on social media. She was very upset. I mean, she freaking punched me. A couple days later, I sit down and talk with her again and she's like, I'm like not letting you leave me. And most fans agree that much of the Howie Mandel podcast was just Tom Sandoval trying to deny and dodge all accountability. Tom really did Ariana dirty with that interview. For example, Sandoval talked in detail about his relationship with Ariana, saying that the two had lost connection at some point and were just merely living like roommates. And Sandoval claimed that due to Ariana's personal issues, they weren't romantic with each other. Especially this past year or so, we've both been dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression and ways that we, we handle it very differently. We're very different people. Ariana's way is more like, like 
staying in bed all day and like just, you know, isolating herself. He also added that Raquel had been a source of strength for him through his tough times with Ariana. And Sandoval added that him and Raquel grew closer over the last year as she was going through her breakup with James Kennedy. And that meanwhile, Tom was feeling like his own relationship with Ariana was over. Raquel and I had become, you know, slowly, you know, especially after her and James broke up, like really, really good friends. Like, confiding in each other, a source of like strength. I, I guess I'll insert my opinion here. I certainly don't think that Raquel is blameless in this affair, in this whole situation, but through watching the last two seasons, Raquel has opened up about her insecurities, knowing that it's an issue for herself and her need to be in relationships that aren't healthy for her. How are you not embarrassed by me? And you can kind of see, even through the engagement, Tom Sandoval inserting himself very heavily into Raquel's life, even inserting himself into her engagement with another guy. Then all of a sudden she goes through this traumatic breakup with someone she was engaged with. And that's all of a sudden when he becomes closer with her while she's enduring this breakup. And to me, all of this just feels reminiscent of a grooming process where someone becomes your best friend, your trustworthy source, you're in a vulnerable situation, and then all of a sudden you're romantically involved with them. I don't know. And if Raquel were not dear friends with Ariana, I would say that Sandoval groomed her. Again, I'm not saying Raquel's blameless and Raquel definitely has a lot of issues, but I do think between the two, Raquel and Sandoval, I am sketched out the most by Tom Sandoval and his actions, if that's fair to say. In the interview with Howie Mandel, Sandoval also accused his fellow Pump Rules stars of using the scandal for their own benefit. Using these things as content for their podcast, Fellow cast members are asking me all these questions, but you don't want to know because you care about Ariana. You want to know so you can have more content for your podcast. It's effing disgusting to me. It's so gross. You are not someone who gives a flying F about Ariana. You're doing this for your own personal gain. Using like using all these things to like as content for their like for their podcast, like, you know, like fellow cast members, like ask me all these questions, like ask me questions, ask me questions. It's like you don't want to know because you care about Ariana. You want to know so you have more content for your podcast. I will say this is the one thing I don't personally entirely disagree with Tom Sandoval on. Not only are reality shows built to be a parasocial relationship between the audience and the reality TV stars, but I find that the most interesting thing about Scandoval is how much all the cast members are quickly taking to social media to post about the event in real time. Every single update they hear, every single moment where they were suspicious of of Sandoval and Raquel, merch about the incident, countless podcasts and appearances on talk shows about the scandal, when really the only three people that are involved in the scandal, Ariana, Raquel, and Sandoval, have been completely silent about the situation for the most part, besides the few public statements they've made. The only person that should be going on a talk show to talk about this is Ariana herself. And the fact that she's staying quiet about it probably means she needs more time to sort through this and emotionally and mentally recover from this huge sense of betrayal. But instead of respecting that or even taking that into consideration, her cast members are jumping at the opportunity for any exposure. And I think it's kind of shitty, to be honest. None of you know what happened. No, this isn't your nine year relationship that ended with you getting cheated on and betrayed by your friend and partner. Why are you talking about it so much? Why are you almost excited at this betrayal? excited about the exposure it gives you. One thing that is bizarre about this entire situation is you can see like the hunger in the cast members eyes at the opportunity to profit off of this scandal. And I think that boils down the essence of what reality shows are in general, because at the end of the day, reality shows profit from traumatic life events. The more traumatic, dramatic, upsetting the scandal is, the better ratings you get, the better it is for the show, the more exposure the reality stars get. How shameless must you have to be to exploit your friend's situation, your friend's situation, 
by going on endless podcasts and talking about all the details and everything that happened and how she found out about the cheating and oh she's feeling so betrayed and I was there for her trust me guys why are you going on a podcast and saying something like that? But anyways, after Tom Sandoval's appearance on the Howie Mandel podcast, Bravo fans were furious because Tom Sandoval didn't really take any accountability. He just deflected it saying Ariana was in denial and also all my fellow cast members are the bad guys, not me, which obviously is not a correct stance on the situation. And many fans feel that Howie should not have given Sandoval a platform to justify his cheating. On Watch What Happens Live, Andy Cohen said about the podcast, that Howie Mandel didn't do his homework and it showed. Howie, you have to be careful before you take a side. Bravo fans are very passionate. Howie Mandel apparently didn't know what he was getting himself into <laughs> with his interview of Tom Sandoval today because it seems like maybe he didn't do his homework. For example, someone tweeted, Howie Mandel's podcast is called Howie Mandel Does Stuff. Well, in this interview, all Howie Mandel does is defend Sandoval and enable a cheater. So throughout the season 10 drama with Raquel that's currently being aired as we speak, no one had any idea that her and Tom Sandoval were in a secret affair. And afterwards, everyone lost their minds. And since then, Scandoval has become major news for the past few months. But the thing is, in a strange way, as devastating as the scandal was for the people involved, for the show itself, Scandoval was the best thing to happen to Vanderpump Rules. When watching Vanderpump Rules, it's easy to forget that the show itself is a business with ratings, producers, and a stake in it all for the stars themselves who profit off of the show as well as how the show brands them and, well, makes them famous. So how rich can the stars of a reality show about servers dating each other really become? Well, the answer is really rich, especially if the show is doing better than ever. According to the network, the March 8th episode of Vanderpump Rules, the first to air since news broke about Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis, months long affair, drew 2.2 million viewers across all platforms in live plus three ratings. In live viewing, that episode doubled its ratings from the previous week, which is a pretty hard feat to do. The network's nightly talk show, Watch What Happens Live, which featured series matriarch Lisa Vanderpump being interviewed by Andy Cohen, also benefited, drawing 593,000 viewers in the 18 to 49 demographic alone. And on Peacock, where Bravo shows stream the next day, the March 8th Vanderpump Rules was, according to the network's data points, the third highest episode ever on Peacock Next Day series in both 18 to 49 demographic and total viewers through three days. And Scandoval has also given the stars of Vanderpump Rules more eyes than ever, which means there's more business opportunities for the stars of the show than ever before. Which made me wonder, what is the net worth of the cast of the show and how much money have they made off of Vanderpump Rules so far? Ariana Maddox's net worth is at a reported 1 million. According to Hollywood Reporter, core cast members of Vanderpump Rules make $25,000 per episode. So that means Ariana is making up to $600,000 per season depending on the episode count. Ariana and her ex Tom Sandoval purchased a $2 million home together in 2019. On top of her cocktail brand, Ariana and her Vanderpump Rules co-star Katie Maloney are in the process of developing the sandwich shop Something About Her, which will open in the coming months. Ariana has also made money from her cocktail books, appearances in media, and the regular Instagram sponsored posts. Tom Sandoval's net worth is reportedly $4 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth, who notes this dude has worked at Sir for more than a decade. He has a 5% stake in the LA restaurant Tom Tom, which was named after him and Tom Schwartz. He has a whiskey brand and only recently opened up the restaurant Schwartz and Sandy's, again alongside his buddy Tom Schwartz and named after the duo. A huge thing that happened in season 9 that has to do with both Tom and Adriana's finances is when Tom took out an equity loan against the house that Sandoval 
and Ariana share. We do need money for the bar, yes, but I'm getting a home equity loan. This was all to help him fund the bar lounge, Schwartz and Sandy's. This entire dynamic concerned Lisa Vanderpump when Ariana told Lisa that this home equity loan wouldn't impact her half of the ownership in the home. Yeah, and then he, well, he's doing that loan that his, but it's only against his own equity. It doesn't affect me at all. It's on the loan, but the bank never goes and takes half the house back. It's like. Ariana, you stay in bed. We only want Tom's off. And Tom put a lot of money into Schwartz and Sandy's, saying on the season 10 premiere, at this point, we invested a million dollars into this project. It's like the national debt. It's just numbers flying. He also admitted that his own mother and stepdad invested a quarter million dollars of their own money into Schwartz and Sandy's. Who do you have investing? It's gonna be me, Tom, we're both getting home equity loans. And Tom's mom is actually gonna throw in some money. And according to reports, Tom Sandoval doesn't even really own much of the Schwartz and Sandy's business. On top of that, Sandoval only owns 5% of Tom Tom, even though the restaurant is literally named after him. I'm not sure of the exact agreements in these businesses or how much money Sandoval has made off of both of them, but from what I have seen about these businesses and his ownership in them, Tom Sandoval is not the most savvy, skilled businessman. <laughs> On the other hand, Raquel Levis's impressive and also very unbelievable net worth is, according to multiple sources, $30 million. Like, again, multiple sources and articles are saying that this is Raquel's net worth. But not a single one of these sources explains how or why she got to being worth 30 million or how she got to accumulating a net worth of 30 million. No one explains how this happened other than saying she competed in beauty pageants and collaborated on an eyeshadow. Of course, Raquel does a lot of paid Instagram content from a Porsche Revolve collab to White Fox boutique ads. And in May of 2022, Raquel teamed up with co-star Lala Kent to create an eyeshadow palette for her brand Lala Beauty, the palette's name paying homage to their dramatic season seven fight where Lala called Raquel a Bambi-eyed biatch. So a net worth of 30 million makes absolutely no sense to me. And I don't know why every single article says that this is her net worth. Maybe she is smarter than all of her co-stars believe her to be. Maybe the $30 million net worth is a lie and planted by her, her PR team. Or maybe she's a trust fund baby. Reality TV thrives off of the controversial, the scandals, the betrayal. And Scandival seemed to be the most scandalous of all reality TV scandals. So undoubtedly, the fallout from the scandal will greatly impact all of these reality TV stars' net worths, and most likely in a positive way, especially for Ariana, who people love more than ever and want to support now more than ever. I gotta ask, do you think everyone should move on from this whole situation? Yeah, I think they should. You think too much was made of it? Um, I don't know. You're just surprised it's still continuing this far long? It's ridiculous, man. Um, the people that are perpetuating it the most are uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the squad of it all. All the girls involved? Yeah. All, yeah. all the, uh, yeah. The paparazzi have been hounding everyone involved in this reality TV scandal, and Ariana Maddox has definitely handled it in the best way. For example, in these photos where she can be seen grabbing McDonald's in sweatpants and flipping off the paparazzi. And a week after the breakup, TMZ published photos and video of Ariana dancing at a wedding in Mexico claiming she couldn't be happier. Ariana was also seen at Coachella recently, looking very happy and spotted with a new man. You, you, you see the photos, you, you see Ariana's kind of moving on? Yes, I love that. Is that what you want? Yes, I do. I really do. So you're happy for her finding potentially a new guy and that sort of stuff? Yes, I'm really happy. On top of that, Ariana is thriving post Scandival with a new gig on Dancing with the Stars and is also reported to be in an upcoming Lifetime movie. 
Hey Ariana, how are you? Good, hey Josh. I'm, I'm good, how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm just running errands. Okay, okay. What up? Uh, how was the Hauser reunion? You have to wait and see on that. Okay, okay, so I heard you're working on a new movie. What are you working on? Yeah, uh, it's a Lifetime movie. Okay. Um, very excited, I leave uh -huh. tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I was just printing stuff out. Okay, is there anything you want to tell us about the movie? Like what character you're playing? Uh, um, I'm playing a police officer. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. What kind of police officer? Like uh, like a detective kind of situation. Okay, yeah. so you're investigating stuff kind of. Yeah. <laughs> alright, alright. Ariana started selling breakup merch too, and I mean, it's her breakup, so why not profit off of it? Another positive side effect seen post Scandival is how it strengthened the friendships between the women on the show, apart from Raquel, of course. Throughout season 10, you can see a sort of hatred between cast members Sheena Shea and Katie Maloney. But now, after the scandal, Katie and Sheena have grown closer and all the women of the show, apart from Raquel, have been hanging out together. Sheena, Katie, and Ariana even DJed a recent emo night event where photos were shot of them laughing and dancing and having a good time all together. There have been some reports that Tom Sandoval has been secretly working behind the scenes to try and salvage his businesses, mainly working on his business, Tom's Good Loving Whiskey brand. That name is a little ironic. But the most concerning thing about this entire scandal is Tom and Ariana Ariana's situation with their home, especially considering Tom took out a home equity loan. Now that the relationship is over and the future of Sandoval's businesses is at the very least questionable, Sandoval allegedly has nowhere to go, isn't doing the best financially, and cannot leave the house he and Ariana share together. So they are right now broken up but continuing to live in the same house. You're in business together, on you're, on a, you're on a reality show together, and you live in the same house. Yeah. That you both are you partners in the house? Yes. Yes. Are you still in the house? Um, yeah, it's actually been it's actually been really uh, pretty pretty calm lately. To be totally honest, like I can't afford to I don't have a lot of friends I can stay with right now. A eh? Raquel, on the other hand, according to various news reports, checked into a counseling program in Arizona to receive treatment for her mental health. Though fans soon after found out that this counseling program is allegedly actually just a fancy resort in Arizona. Earlier they reported that Rachel was in a mental health facility, but it seems like that was a bit misleading. It's now being reported that she's at a luxury wellness resort. So think of it as like an extended spa weekend. And apparently it is even couple friendly and Tom Sandoval is reported to be maybe joining her soon. A representative for Raquel said about the program, Raquel and her family decided before the relationship was discovered that she would enter a voluntary facility for mental health counseling. Lisa, I have to ask you, Raquel just checked into a mental health facility. I mean, do you think people should kind of give her a break on everything? She just checked she in. She did, I didn't even know that. Do you think people need to like stop with the hate towards her? I mean, we know it's yes, cheating. Yes, I do, I do. Lies, cheating, and betrayal are some of the most heartbreaking aspects of the human experience. And when we watch another person endure that kind of treatment, you can't help but empathize with the person experiencing that, root for them, and want to go to bat for them. Reality shows are built for and meant to capitalize off of parasocial relationships. And after Scandival is all said and done, not only am I concerned for Ariana, but also concerned for the fans who may have felt deeply emotionally affected by this scandal because reality shows are meant to do that, meant to affect you deeply. And Scandival is probably the biggest example of all time of that happening. So especially if you are someone who's been betrayed or cheated on, I hope you're doing okay at the end of this. I hope the story of Ariana and Scandival gives you hope that there is light at the end of the rainbow, that cheaters can be held accountable, that you are not alone in your pain. And that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching to the end if you made it. I hope you guys are all doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one till then. Bye!